Brothers and sisters, in our time of trial, a time where all of the powers of the world seem to have gathered to destroy this Ummah, we are suffering in our countries from east to west. We might think that it can't get any worse. That this is the worst time of the Ummah. And as such, because we have heard about references to Dajjal, many will seek to interpret from our circumstances, the one in which we are living now, the presence and the fitna of Al-Masih al-Dajjal, of the Antichrist. However, the reality is not as it might seem. This time is not as bad as it could get. One of the things that may point in direction of that is that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu had said that the Dajjal will not appear until people forget about him and the Imams stop mentioning him on the pulpits. No doubt, it is not very often that we hear Reminders of the Jal and his time. So perhaps from that perspective, the time is near. However, this khutbah is dedicated to the Jal. So we haven't reached the time yet. The Jal as I mentioned, has been interpreted within the existing circumstances where countries, systems have been identified as Dajjal. However, when we listen to Prophet Muhammad وسلم, speak about Dajjal, it will be very clear to us that what we're hearing on the YouTube, the lectures about Dajjal, for the most part, are incorrect. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, did say, Ma bayna khalqi Adam. إلى قيام الساعة أمر أكبر من الدجال. There is no trial from the time of Adam's creation until the last hour greater than that of الدجال. And he informed us that the coming of الدجال was warned about by all of the prophets. وأن الله عز وجل لم يبعث نبيا إلا حذر أمته من الدجال. Allah most great and glorious never sent a prophet without warning their nation about a dajjal. And that's why it is not surprising to find in the scriptures and the writings of the Christians and the Jews reference to the Antichrist. The Christians have a number of uh, references which they have interpreted in different ways. At one point in time, the Protestants, when they broke away from the Catholic domination, they identified the Pope as a Dajjal. And in more recent times, with the rise of Islam, 
we hear them or spokespeople or persons among them saying that Islam is a Dajjal, is the Antichrist. Because for them, of course, Christ is God and Muslims hold that he is not. So it's a convenient label. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, gave us clear instructions. Because Prophet Isa was not the last of the messengers of Allah, his message was not preserved like that of Muhammad وسلم, Though essentially it's the same message. But what Prophet Isa conveyed in his time has been lost amongst the Christian world today. They don't really know what his message was. They have mixed it up so much, they have concluded that his message was that he was God. You can't get any further away from the truth than that. And so, when you read about what is said concerning the Antichrist with them, it's confused. In Revelations, there are references, verses which describe the Jal in many, many different ways. But it's, reading it, it sounds like somebody who had taken drugs and had blown his mind talking about serpents with many heads and each head having a, a mouth and each mouth having a this and a that and you know, really crazy stuff. And it's not surprising as we said because they lost the message of Jesus. So they made up other things to fill the gaps. However, in the case of the final message, because there was no other message to come, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, gave us a very clear description of Dajjal, of his times, of the trials that the world would face, right up to his death. The whole picture crystal clear and he used to teach the Sahaba to seek refuge from at Dajjal at the end of each of their prayers the way that he used to teach a chapter from the Quran that's what they said it is narrated that the Prophet ﷺ and Rasulullah كان يعلمهم هذا الدعاء كما يعلمهم السورة من القرآن What dua is that? He used to teach them this dua the way he used to teach a chapter from the Quran اللهم إني أعوذ بك من عذاب جهنم ومن عذاب القبر ومن فتنة المحيا والممات ومن شر فتنة المسيح الدجال O Allah I seek refuge in you from the punishment of the hellfire, the torment of the grave, trials of living and dying, and from the evil trials of the Antichrist, Al-Masih Al-Dajjal. Now, the Prophet ﷺ also told us, the hour will not arrive until about 30 lying Dajjals appear, each claiming that he is a messenger of Allah. So that is the lesser Dajjals. Dajjal means deceiver. Comes from Dajjala, which means to deceive. He's the deceiver. But Al-Masih al-Dajjal, this is the great deceiver, the ultimate. These that the Prophet ﷺ spoke about, 30, around 30, they claim that they were 
the messenger of Allah. We have some that we know about. Ghulam Ahmed, well known. Before him, in the distant past, from the time of the Prophet ﷺ until after his time, was Musaylama. He was known. And in between, there were many others. And there will be others to come who will claim prophethood. In America, we had our own. The uh, promoter, Rashad Khalifa, the promoter, Egyptian origin, based in uh, Tucson, Arizona, claimed that he was a messenger of Allah. And his miracle was discovering the mathematical key to the Quran, the 19. Some of you may know about it, heard about it. Many of you may not. Because that was a fitna around the 80s. In the 80s, where his, this idea had spread very rapidly and people were amazed at what he had claimed to discover of the mathematical miracle of the Quran. Then it turned out, I wrote a book exposing it to be a hoax and a heresy, and he went on to claim prophethood. Alhamdulillah, he is no longer with us. He was assassinated in America shortly after his claim of being the messenger of Allah. Some people say, I was behind it. <laughs> Which is not true. Anyway, the Prophet وسلم, described the Jal in very precise terms. Remember, we have some people who say, the Jal is the television. Is the television. Because we have this idea that the Jal is like a cyclops, one big eye in the middle of his head. And I think we've seen some um, things on Facebook and circulated of a child born and so and so with a big eye in the middle of his head. And <clears throat> a few months back, I remember seeing it. That circulates every so often. Once a year, twice a year, it comes out. This idea of the one big eye. So they say, well, that's the television looking at you, feeding you. <clears throat> However, the Prophet ﷺ, he described him as being blind in the right eye. He has both a right eye and a left eye. He sees through the left and he is blind in the right. So it's not the television. End of story. And he said that the right eye will be like a floating grape, shaking while in the socket. The left eye will also be defective, not blind, but defective, having a thick film which will give it the look of green glass. And it will be bulging, it will bulge. Furthermore, the Prophet ﷺ described his complexion as being ruddy white. Ruddy white means white to the point of redness. The people of Finland, north, the northern areas of Europe, you'll find them having this complexion, white with redness in it. They call it ruddy white. His forehead will be prominent. And his neck wide. You'll not have a neck and then head. It will be a wide neck. And he will be short and stout with a powerful build. And his back will be slightly hunched. Those people, the big bodybuilders and that, you see them there. Backs start 
be looking something like that. Some people said it looked like um, Mike Tyson. Anyway, his feet will be set apart, all the muscles and everything else. You know, it's, and he will have a lot of curly hair, like small-headed snakes curled on each other, locks like you know, of hair. He will also be sterile, having no children. According to the Prophet ﷺ, he most resembles Abdul Uzza ibn Qatan. Or Qatan. Abdul Uzza ibn Qatan from the Mustalaq clan of Khuza'a tribe who died in pre Islamic times. So he described him as looking like a particular individual. So it's not a nation. It's not the television. It's not the internet. Disbelief, the Prophet ﷺ said, would be written between his two eyes, which will be recognizable by both those who are literate and those who are illiterate. Kafara. Kafara will be written on his forehead and the believers will see it whether they can read or whether they can't. So this is the description of Al-Masih al-Dajjal. When is the time? The Prophet ﷺ told us that it would be in the time of the Mahdi. And of course, the question comes, when is the time of the Mahdi? That's a whole another lecture. Maybe another khutbah, inshallah, will deal with the Mahdi. But anyway, the Mahdi, the Prophet ﷺ had said, would be from his descendants, and he would have the same name as the Prophet ﷺ, Muhammad ibn Abdullah, Father's name would be Abdullah. And he would be, some narrations say that he'd be from the line of Fatima. But anyway, he would appear, Allah would change him overnight, and he would appear from among the Ummah and lead the struggle against the forces gathered to erase Islam towards the end of time. At any rate, during that period, their will, after the Mahdi, succeeds in overcoming the forces of other nations, whether it is Europe, Christian nations, whatever. He overcomes them and sets up a rule a rule which the Prophet ﷺ had said would be a time when justice would be spread throughout the earth. He will fill the earth with justice and fairness as it was filled with injustice and inequity. And he will rule for seven years. Towards the end of his rule, a drought will begin on earth. There will be three years of drought. In the first year, Allah will command the sky to withhold one-third of its water. Rain, one-third of the rain will stop. In the second year, two-thirds will stop. And in the third year, no rain will take place anywhere on earth. Rain would stop altogether. Has that happened yet? No. So these are the signs to let you know clearly that Jal is not here and now. 
When that circumstance arises, everybody will know it. When there is no rain anywhere on the earth, it will be in the papers, it will be known. It will be well known. And at that time, the Jal will appear from the east. The Prophet ﷺ was reported by Abu Bakr to say, the Jal will first appear from a land in the east called Khurasan. Now Khurasan is currently in Iran. And it is a region, it is also a city within what is known as uh, Kurdistan. And this area, he would appear first, followed by the next major appearance between Syria and Iraq, where he will come in conflict with the forces of the Mahdi. That's the first point at which the trials will begin. And his followers will come from Muslims and non-Muslims. In one of the narrations, the Prophet ﷺ had said that he would encamp outside of Medina and the hypocrites and disbelievers of Medina would come pouring out following him. In another narration, the Dajjal will appear from a land. He will be accompanied by, in Khurasan, he will be accompanied by people whose faces look like beaten iron, flat type faces. Some people concluded that that was the Mongols. That's why when the Mongols in the 13th century, when they hit the Muslim world and massacred Muslims left and right, they said this is Dajjal's forces, the forces of Dajjal. But it wasn't. So this is not the first time that Muslims have misinterpreted events. And the Prophet ﷺ had said that 70,000 Jews from Asbahan or Isfahan, this is again also in Iran, not too distant from uh, Khorasan, they would join him. So there would be Jews, there would be Christians, Muslims following him. So this is a time of great trial to come. And we can only ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from that time. And to keep us firm in faith. Because it will only be a firm handle on Islam that will take us successfully through that time. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect the ummah, to protect us, our families, our children from this time, this fitna, and to keep us firmly knowing Islam and practicing it. What will make a Dajjal such a fitna? that would cause so many people to follow him. And what makes him different from the other Dajjals who came before? Well, those who came before, as we said, would say that they were messengers of Allah. We know them as false. However, Dajjal will claim that he is Allah. This is the difference. Now, this is not the first time that people have claimed that they are Allah. We had Sai Baba in Tamil Nadu for many years. He died a few years back, claiming that he was Allah. He had over 8 million followers in India. One of the presidents of India was among his followers believing that he was God incarnate. So it's not 
the first time. Eight million is not a small number. But when Dajjal claims that he is Allah, his claim will supersede all other claims. Because he will bring the proof to people. He will come at a time when people are desperate. Remember, the three years of drought. When people become most desperate for food. When he comes amongst the people. Not the people he's fighting, the forces of the Mahdi. That's different. That's the battlefield. But when he enters into various lands around the earth, and he will go across the earth, he will carry with him, according to the Prophet ﷺ, a mountain of bread and a mountain of meat. Now, you might think, wow, how is that? We don't need to go into how. We don't need to go into how. The fact is, Prophet ﷺ said he will have with him a mountain of bread and a mountain of meat. At a time when the world is in a state of starvation, the drought, supplies have run out, finished. Without rain, the crops dry up. Food, production, stopped. People are desperate. And here is this man coming from nowhere. With him, a mountain of bread and a mountain of meat. How will we be at that time? He will also have with him what appears to be gardens from the gardens of paradise and flaming pits from the pits of hell and rivers will follow him wherever he goes. One of the rivers will be white and appear cool, while the other will be liquid fire like lava or liquid metal. This is what he's bringing along with him. The treasures of the earth will come out at his command. He will command the earth to give up its treasures and it will come out. He will enter virtually every city on the earth. And he will take some people, Bedouins from different areas, and say to them, if I resurrected your parents, would you testify that I am your Lord, God? And of course, if somebody says to you, I will resurrect your parents. If I resurrect your parents, will you accept me as God? Seeing all of this, that's the final stroke. How many of us would be able to say no? I still wouldn't believe. And of course, the vast majority will say yes. If you can do that, you have to be God. And he will then call on two from the jinn who will appear in the form of your parents. And they will say to you, follow him, my son. Follow him. For he is your Lord. And people will follow. He will appear to give life to the dead. He will chop a man in half. Have him sawn in half. Walk between the two halves. Turn and call the halves to come and they will come back together and he'll come running at him smiling and falling before him.
how will we be then? Will we be able to stand firm then at a time like that? And he will dominate the world for 40 days. But the first day will be as long as a year. And then the next day as long as a month. The third as long as a week. And the rest according to our normal days. When the Prophet ﷺ told that to the Sahaba, that he would rule for 40 years, the first day would be the length of a year. What do you think was their question? Their question was, how will we pray? That was their concern, salah. See, that was the iman that brought to them the most important question on that day, that day which would be like a year, no setting of the sun, how will we pray then? And the miracle of the prophethood spoke saying estimate it you will estimate it at that time and this is the hadith which is used to, for us to figure out when to pray when we're inside the arctic circle up north people finally ended up there Muslims up there and then the question came how do we pray? They have six months of day and six months of night. So people wonder, how do we pray? The Prophet Sallallahu gave the answer 1,400 years ago. Estimated. And that period would come to an end with the besieging of the forces of the Mahdi. Those who are fighting with the Mahdi are defeated across the earth. And they are reduced to being besieged in Jerusalem. And at this time, when the end seems near, the complete domination of a Dajjal, Allah will send Prophet Isa. Descending, as the Prophet ﷺ said, close to a white minaret to the east of Damascus, wearing two white robes, and his hands will be resting on the wings of two angels. From there, he will go to Jerusalem where the Mahdi and those with him are besieged by Dajjal and his forces. And the Prophet ﷺ said, at Fajr, when he arrives there, Prophet Isa arrives there at Fajr, and the Mahdi steps forward to lead the Salah, Salatul Fajr, and Isa joins them, alayhi salam. The Mahdi will step backwards in order for Prophet Jesus to come forward. However, Prophet Isa will put his hand on the back of the Mahdi and tell him to continue and lead the prayer. Go forward and lead the prayer because the call for prayer was made for you. So he will lead them in the prayer. As soon as the prayer is over, with the forces of Dajjal breaking down the gates of Jerusalem, Prophet Isa will say, open the gates, let them in. And they will open it wide and the thousands of followers will come pouring in with Dajjal in their midst. When Dajjal spots Prophet Isa, 
he turns and begins to run. The Prophet ﷺ described him as beginning to dissolve. He starts to crumble. But he continues to run. Prophet Isa runs after him. Catches him. Kills him with a spear. Then lifts the spear with his blood on it to show the followers of Dajjal as well as the followers of the Mahdi, Muslims, that Dajjal was finished. That will be the end. So this picture, which was painted for us by the Prophet ﷺ, was a clear picture which invites us to cling firmly to Islam. So that if that time catches us, we'll be able to withstand the trials that are coming. He also advised us to memorize the first ten or the last ten verses of Surah Al-Kahf, which we are to read, encouraged to read every Friday. And Surah Al-Kahf speaks about the signs of Allah reminding us when the signs of shaitan become dominant and we should seek refuge in our day to day prayers at the end of our daily compulsory prayers protection against dajjal since the Prophet ﷺ used to teach that dua like he taught a surah from the Quran, it means we all should know it. We all should use it. And we should be in frequent remembrance of Allah. Because that is what is going to give us the firmness of faith to be able to withstand his trials. And also the Prophet ﷺ warned us that if you hear the Jal is in a land and you might think your faith strong to stand or to withstand his trial. And in the time of the Jal, when he is cutting people, making them come back, he will take a youth, one young man, cut him and put him back together again, ask him, do you believe that I'm your Lord? And he will say, no. I'm even more certain that you are the Masih al-Dajjal. You're not God. And he will take him and try to cut off his neck. Failing that, he throws him into that river of fire that is with him. And he will appear to burn up. The Prophet ﷺ has said that he is the greatest martyr in the sight of Allah. And he said, whenever you see him, if he comes amongst you, and you see that river, those two rivers behind him, or beside him, the cool one looking like it's coming from the gardens of paradise, and the hot evil one looking like it's coming from hell, he said, dive into the one coming from hell. Because that is the one leading to paradise. Will we have the faith, the strength to make that decision on that day? We don't want to seek him. Don't think that you are going to be that martyr. The Prophet ﷺ said, if you hear he's in one place... Go to some other place. Run. Flee. If you can make it to Mecca and Medina, these will be the only two cities on the earth that you will not be able to enter. If you can make it there, go there. And hope that you will not be among those when he causes the earth to shake. In Medina, with the millions of inhabitants, he will cause the earth to shake three times. Earthquakes. And people will come running out to join him, to be his followers. 
to be saved from the earthquakes, that we will be amongst those who will stay there and die if the buildings fall on us, rather than go out and follow him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep him foremost in our minds and to keep the deen foremost in our limbs, in our actions, and to keep our focus as Jannah, paradise, and to forego the things of this world which will take us away from it, and to seek the things of this world which will bring us closer to it. We ask Allah to forgive our parents, forgive their sins, make their graves graves from the gardens of paradise, and we ask Allah to guide our children, to protect them, to keep them firmly on this faith until Allah takes them from this world. Seeking knowledge and obligation made easy. Thought about studying for a long time? Tuition fees keeping you from actually starting? Islamic Online University has led a revolution in online learning. The world's first tuition-free degree, BA in Islamic Studies. Access the knowledge, any place, anytime, anywhere. It just doesn't get any easier than that. Classes, texts, assignments, completely online. Set your own schedule for the semester. No overseas travel required for the exams. Subjects taught by qualified English-speaking scholars. Weekly live sessions in virtual classrooms. With curricula based on those in El Medina University in Saudi Arabia, El Azhar University in Cairo, and other reputable institutions around the world. Why wait any longer? You pay just a symbolic registration fee and are ready to begin the adventure of higher education. The most diverse student body of any university in the world, 130,000 plus registered students from 217 countries. Log in to the website for more details, www.islamiconlineuniversity.com.